Support and resistance levels are the most important thing to learn in trading and in particular crypto trading. So I'm making this video just as Bitcoin is about to, ha about to have a very important day. So, okay, so let's start off. With, well, what's a support level? A support level is when a lot of people at a particular time are buying something at a, at a particular price and they are unlikely to sell below that price so therefore the price has a support above that level so so in this situation here there was a lot of people buying Bitcoin at this price and they don't really want to sell below that because they bought above so when it when I had this breakout over 5,000 I made a video saying now is the best time to buy Bitcoin I don't believe the price is going to go lower because so many people bought Bitcoin uh, above 5,400 that like even though it went down there a few days ago the people are like no I'm not going to sell at that level like I, I, I want to keep my Bitcoin because they know that at some point it will get above 7,000 so that's what happened here lots of people were buying Bitcoin around 5,400 and then when it came down, those people were like, no, I'm not selling. I like a lot of I say these were mostly traders and institutional uh, investors that were selling Bitcoin. And people were like, no, I'm not. I'm not selling my Bitcoin. Are you crazy? At five below four thousand five hundred, I want to keep it because this is going to get to ten. Because they're thinking it's going to. It's obviously going to be much higher. So a support. So a support level is pretty much the lowest price that a. a that something is going to go down to in the short term. A resistance level is the way around where there was a lot of people selling at a particular price. So when a price gets a certain high, a lot of people go, oh, okay, that's really too high. 7,900, that's really high. I'm going to sell, 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 sell. And so people are like, no way. I don't think it's going to get above 7,900. That that price is ridiculous because a lot of professional traders are saying, wow, Okay, you know, <laughs> when it's getting that price, a lot of professional traders were saying, I'm selling. I mean, like, I, I was talking to traders, people were saying, okay, I've got to sell. That price is ridiculous. So that's a resistance, that's a resistance level. There's a certain amount of people that will, that will, that don't think that people will buy more than a certain price, so they sell. They get, obviously, the most of profit they can. So, Looking at my charts, I'm obviously, uh, I'm, uh, I'm studying the different price levels, and as you can see that at particular that this was at some point a resistance level, and then it became a it came not really not a, a kind of like a weak support level. Uh, maybe better example. Look at previous. The theory goes that resistance levels eventually become um, support levels, and <laughs> in the past month, I don't really have a great example of that. So much because the price has been so volatile. But the idea is that the theory goes that if Bitcoin breaks through this resistance level. There's another resistance level that needs to break through here. But then that resistance level could become a support level. So if you see another big green candle day tomorrow or today, no, tomorrow, most likely this previous, this used to be a resistance level of 7,400. And you can see that, you know, that there was some price above it, but it's largely this resistance line of 7,400 was keeping the price down. 
um, that if it breaks through this, then this becomes a new support level, then we st we're into a new market. And, um, and that becomes the new support level. However, if this week, or today or tomorrow, the price does not get to stay above this level, and if that goes down, then this uh, remains a resistance level. And so then some people might say, well, okay, well, there's also this uh, level here that's quite clear. It could all go down here, down to this support level. But in this particular situation, if the price of Bitcoin can't break through this and it does go down, this leg up is, we call this, a bull trap. People think that it's going to reach a new all-time high and it doesn't, it goes down. And if the price goes lower than 5000 400 it will go down 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 to a lower support level where there's less panic which could be 4900 or it could be 3000 because look testing resistance level goes down oh this is good support level goes up supports the resistance level if it does not succeed and this fails panic comes in and you're talking about an epic price crash and a really long bear market so, why is it important to learn about price levels? Well, because it's really handy when it comes to setting stop losses. So, let's say I bought Bitcoin when it was a five thousand four hundred going up, and I don't, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I think I oh, maybe won't actually break this level, and I want to sell soon. Well, then I'll use these price levels to stop my, to place my stop loss. Maybe I'll place a stop loss here. So, if it goes down, it'll sell, and I'll buy back. I back down again, or put it here, whatever, or if I'm going to be away from my desk for a week and I don't really want to sell my Bitcoin and buy back quickly because I'm at my desk and that actually will I mean I will lose money, then I'll put my stop loss way down here and I'll only sell in the case of um, a market crash, otherwise I'm happy just to keep my Bitcoin jump bouncing up and down. So, support levels is when a lot of people bought at a certain price and they're not going to sell below that gives the price action a cushy support and it's got something to bounce off. Resistance levels is where the price has a difficulty going through a certain level and therefore it will go down. Now, when I'm... So here, for, this is a daily chart, so uh, there's, there's what I call over sold bounces. So the price of Bitcoin was overbought, there was too many people buying, it was obviously going to crash. When it got down here, it was still okay, still in bull momentum, but it was like a, not a lot of people buying. And so this was like a oversold bounce. So if a lot of people are selling, at some point a lot of people are going to jump in and buy and it, it creates this bounce. Um, other than I'm a bit cautious for the day, you know, it's either going to break, I mean, it's breaking above the level now as I'm speaking, so that looks good now in this moment, but if it spends the entire day above this line, uh, that's really good, but uh, if it goes down, that's okay, but if it goes below, um, if it goes below this line, that's an epic bear market, but look, the MACD looks like it's crossing, and that will give us uh it will indicate a bullish week. If, if if the price of Bitcoin stays above this resistance line for a day and the MACD crosses, that's an indication for like another bullish week and maybe another bullish two weeks. <clears throat> uh, so I'd recommend once a week, just refreshing resistance support levels, see how people draw the lines, see how people do it. I just kind of, it's an art, not a science really is all right, all right, science there's no right way or wrong way and you can see that my kind of like past lines my current lines kind of fit my past lines and sometimes I sometimes I might actually just adjust them because I'm looking at this one I'm like why did I put that there I must have put that there before the price is finished now what that was put there for Anyway, 
uh, review support and resistance levels every week and every time you look at your charts we draw them going through a few other altcoins if my computer allows me to Bitcoin Cash at the price like multiply by four or five and as it was coming down it kept breaking through it kept breaking these price levels and that's how you, and since there was no there was there were there was bounces within these days and I was like buying at the bounce and selling and gaining like thirty percent profit but that's like a risky it's like a risky trade to do if you, uh, but otherwise it wasn't able to maintain these levels and the price kept going down so I mean look at that I mean the price the price of Bitcoin Cash could pick up any day but look at I'd say <laughs> an epic epic crash who knows Bitcoin Cash might come back how's my beloved EOS doing I need to delete files on my computer so looking at the I've been following the price levels for EOS uh, for about, I don't know, like two weeks now. And they've been working quite beautifully. Like I called here, right, when it was like, cause so looking at the daily chart, it was obvious that I kept bouncing off this line. And then even when it was going down, it was bouncing, going up, bouncing, going up, bouncing, going up. And I was like, look, guys, it's definitely not going to go below this. And, uh, if I, if it has a breakout, it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be pretty good. So here, why don't I have a price level there? It doesn't really mean anything. Maybe I do. I'll just start when I look at the hourly chart. Um, so here, look, it's bouncing off this. This one is this so this is for this week. This is a very strong support level zero 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 two two eight. And if you can buy it, at some point uh, zero zero twenty one. I'd say zero zero twenty one is going to be the absolute lowest it's going to be for the weekend. I say you will be able to buy it at zero zero at zero point zero zero two one four but you can still buy it at zero zero two two. Um it's kind of oversold so like I mean it's all coin all, all coins are risky but it's a really long epic bull run. This is like a month long bull run. This is the best coin to have at the moment by far. Um, looking at so at the moment I'm using the hourly to look at what I'm going to buy in. So as this was going down, it's I, like I can't remember when I when did I I sold somewhere here and I came down here I bought sold because I saw I was hitting these levels having difficulty getting through. Um, You know, and it kept bouncing, I uh, kept buying, and so I was going down again, selling, bouncing, hold it. I held it through that because I was like, yeah, no way is it going below that. And it's going up here. So I'm quite happy what I've done with this so far. I'll probably put my stop loss. I'll either put my stop loss here, because it could still go down and go back up again. But then again, I don't want to get stopped out. Like getting stopped out when I'm, when I'm not on my screen is really annoying. Um, alt is a more volatile, volatile Bitcoin. And look, and here, like, it's like, yeah, the RSI is going up. It's at the, it, you know, it's only, we've only had three hours of the MACD crossing. I mean, I should, I shouldn't have, I, I want, if I see a green ca candle over this, I'll be very happy and I'll put my stop loss under this line. I say, I want a full green candle over this, or I could just put my stop loss here. Um, that'll be an hour or two. Change my stop loss about an hour, hour anyway. So it's, so it's, so it's, it's obviously, it doesn't, we don't know yet if it's going to go up or down, but I mean, yeah, we would really need like 
50 meter green candles are aligned to, to be safe. In fact, maybe it's even going down. Maybe like per stop loss here or something. Because if it does, because it's, it's one of those things where if it goes down, I want to sell as soon as possible. But at the same time, getting stopped out, you can you can just just get stopped out. And um, um, I out obviously doing good. I'd probably just adjust these price levels, but yeah, doing good. Oh, I mean, it's going down now for the rest of the day. Um, because while Bitcoin is doing this, uh, holding on to alt is not a good idea, except for EOS. Uh, I might tighten my stop loss now because, like, if Bitcoin break, it's because if Bitcoin breaks through that level, which it looks like it's about to do, um, Yeah, all the old coins are gonna go down, except for possibly EOS. EOS just goes down less. Monero, very disappointed. Wasn't expecting four down days. Maybe it will go back up again, but I was quite disappointed. It's going through these levels. It could still turn around, but it's disappointing. Um, that's just going down. They're, they all, all the right now in this moment. All the altcoins should be going down. They're the ones that people trade more against the dollar will be doing better. Otherwise, most altcoins should be going down now. I mean, as, as I'm looking at this video, it's like Bitcoin and US. They're the only two altcoins. They're the only, they're only two cryptocurrencies I would have. Because they're both going up. US may go down in the next hour or so because of Bitcoin. Otherwise, Bitcoin looks like it's still going up. So anyway, so learn about your price levels. Um, support levels tell you when it's a good time to buy in. If where do I? I don't right now. Maybe I don't have a, the best. Maybe I can show example EOS. Let's say it. This, I was calling this a this, calling this a strong support level, right? So it reaches here, it starts going green, do, 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 do. the RSI is rising, it's pretty low, this is a low-ish, yeah, this is in the low range, and the MACD is crossing, that is why I call a oversold bounce, and I'm using the 15 minutes, I'll make another video about which is the right time frame to use, but for oversold bounces use the 15 minutes, and then use the hourly to confirm the hourly will confirm maybe an hour or two later that that is in fact uh, a movement upwards. So this is this this is telling me when to buy. This is telling me holy shit I should probably sell right now uh, as it's going down. Um, Twitter, Facebook, Steam, it, share, like, subscribe to this video, make it a donation, live free or die trying.